Okay, what you see here is what I call my Mustang Grape Garden Bed. Part of my summer inventory update tour series for 2023. And just like my Mexican Plum Garden Bed, I, I, I named these last couple beds here uh, after the main crop that I'm trying to grow. Everything else is built around that crop. Uh, it's kind of at the base of the hill. What you see here, all these little seed heads were part of the root crop garden bed update. Uh, you see the desmanthus and the, the native grass mixed in with the, uh, these little seed heads, which are uh, wild native onion. And that native onion has exploded out of the bed and into the Mexican or the uh, Mustang grape garden bed. So the Mustang grape grows along this line of live trees that I keep dwarfed down and I need to get up there and do some trimming. You see I've got cedar elm, a hedge of elbow bush, and then ash juniper, which continues on to here. And all this is going to be living trellis for the Mustang grape. Although, to give a word about the Mustang grape, I wish that I hadn't have planted it here. <laughs> Mustang grape tends to like a more moist soil. It will grow in super dry soil once it's established, but getting it established is, is no small feat. Uh, these are all grown from seed, so yeah, I walked around various places uh, in my neighborhood, other places, and collected seed in July and planted all this from seed. And I'll probably do a grow guide on this uh, if you're interested in doing that yourself, but it's a very, very slow process. Um, in, in the grow guide, I'll, I'll discuss this more, but Mustang grape uh, is dioecious, so you have male and female plants. You can get lucky and have one that is uh, self-fertile, uh, monoecious, but um, uh, it's, it's not very common. It's more common to have male and female plants, and the males are more common than the females, and the males do not provide fruit. So if you're trying to be really productive, I don't know that I would advise you doing it this way. And if you are going to grow Mustang grape, I would try to find a place that has uh, more moisture, like near uh, along a, a creek or a, a pond of some kind. Um, otherwise, you're going to be doing some substantial supplemental watering at first. So to start off, what I have is a wild blackberry from Arkansas. And it looks like it's rooted itself, ground layered itself, uh, just to the side. This, this particular um, plant is uh, amazing at establishing itself. So uh, we'll eventually have some wild blackberries growing back here that the Mustang grape can climb on. You can see this is the largest Mustang grape plant that I have on this line. It goes up probably about six and a half feet, maybe seven. And it's growing nicely along these trees that I'm using as a trellis. Um, let's see, and we have, of course, there's mixed in desmanthus and wood sorrel, and another plant that showed up this year, I have yet to identify. Maybe I'll spend some time identifying it uh, in editing, but uh, wanted to capture it because it started to show up all over the property this year. Um, in this particular line, we have, in the same line with the Mustang grape, uh, I have passion flower which you can see it got devoured by the uh, Gulf fritillary caterpillars, but it's coming back. And I thought I would leave it there because it helps create this netting, living netting of trellis material for the Mustang grape. I have a smaller Mustang grape vine down here growing on my impromptu trellis. Try to get it up higher. Yeah, here we go. It's probably, if I was to extend it all the way up, probably about three foot tall, but um, I, I need to spend more time putting a, a better uh, trellis system in here. We have this guy, which really took off this year. If I have extended all the way up, it'd probably be seven foot tall. Uh, it's growing around the trellis nicely. There's actually two plants down here. We got some woodland uh, or wild strawberry spreading in nicely. And the last one in that line is another Mustang grape growing up a little impromptu trellis, which I'll eventually fix. Now you see I have really nothing growing in here. The only thing this would be suitable for would be annuals because this is utility easement. And I've discussed that in another video on how I've designed and laid out everything. Okay, coming back, we have another line. 
some stuff sprouts in the walkway like i have a passion flower that sprouted in the walkway and it's not growing here right now here's another passion flower uh, oh i guess i broke it i broke it off <laughs> in the walkway well it got in my way what can i say but uh there was some um, thistle growing here which i did avoid and it's it's seeded so hopefully we'll get thistle next year and i have kind of a a makeshift swale built out of decaying logs going all the way around and yes during the rain the water does puddle on the other side uh, once the logs started to break down and coalesce and dirt got mixed in and i've thrown some compost in there uh, from throwing compostable material on there uh, it's it's created a nice solid little little berm um, we have the last surviving hazelnut i had two hazelnuts and the other one died dried out last year in the drought didn't make it and this is the last one you can see that it's from past growth it also is not doing very well in these 100 degree temperatures full sun um, in my um, side yard garden bed update i showed uh, i think i may have finally unlocked how to get hazelnut to grow in the cross timbers uh, and this is not it so i'll probably end up ripping that out of the ground and planting something else like i did over here we've got a nice little passion flower growing up and it's going all the way up my living trellis that's nice and you can see all the little cedar elms that i keep dwarfed down and the ash junipers that i keep dwarfed down to allow light in uh, this is a nanking cherry and it's doing really really well a little bit dry but um, you know it's established itself quite nicely a little elbow bush and the last part in this line we got a couple of uh, wild onions that have spread themselves here and this tree is a texas persimmon so you know you're familiar with the persimmons you buy in the store those are usually from asia uh, native there and there is a persimmon that is native to the uh, to east texas in the eastern part of the united states um, i think it's actually called the eastern persimmon but um, i'll probably annotate what it's called the genus and species this is none of those this is a native texas variety uh, uh, texas persimmon that's actually the the common name and i think it's more native to the hill country so i wanted to grow persimmons and i've mentioned this in past videos whenever i pick crops i try to uh, make sure to pick something that is as native as possible and i first start with my local area and try to get the exact phenotype and if there is nothing that fits the bill, then I'll step out and go a little bit more broad and go to the next eco region, north or south, east or west. And then I'll go to the state level and then to the United States level. And of course, I'll always bounce that against any invasive species lists uh, to try to pick my crops. So I arrived at the Texas persimmon. And again, like the Mustang grape, this is a, a passion project. If you're trying to, to grow for food and you're trying to get a maximum food production as fast as possible, do not go with this variety. Go with your more cultivated varieties of persimmon. But um, this will eventually produce. Um, it's also dioecious. You have male and female trees. So out of the six persimmons that I have planted, you know, hopefully some of them end up females. I won't know for many, many years until they get very large. So again if you're trying to create as much production and food as fast as possible this may not be the way to go but um, that's what i chose was a texas persimmon because i like to try to grow native crops all right let's get on the other side of this line and we have oh i can't believe i still have a morning glory growing down here you can see this little heart-shaped leaf right here <laughs> native morning glory i thought that was kind of neat all right so this is a three-leaf sumac let's get closer on these leaves i don't believe there's any edible value there's still a couple berries on it It was loaded down with berries this was taken from an air layering of a female plant i found off my property oh look at those got some berries and uh it, the it's seeded uh for the first time this year since i've taken the air layering and then potted it up and then nursed it and then planted it in the ground last year so it's nice and established. Haven't had to give it any water at all. Very native. Like I said, I'm not, I don't believe there's any edible value to them. Not like the, uh, the flame leaf or prairie sumac, which does have edible value, uh, but it does have value for wildlife and pollinators do love the male and female flowers. So, uh, and I think it's a pretty plant. So I planted it and grew it. Got a passion flower that stashed itself down here. It's not growing too well, but it's alive and it's perky. There's nothing like perky. 
And then we have a couple of uh, wild strawberries, which surprisingly are growing here. And another persimmon. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a female. But um, oddly, it's, it's the leaves are sparsed out on it. There's not a whole lot of leaves, but it's still alive. It comes back every year. And this is like the second year in the ground, so it's probably well established. Probably just needs a lot more water. This is a very, very dry spot. So I've begun starting to do some earthworks, try to get swells put in. Um, I'll probably do a separate video on that. And again, more of the dwarfed uh, elms, cedar elms. You can see I harvested this cedar elm, which I um, uh, pollarded. And so I could create some sticks, stakes and various things. I, I do manage uh, everything that grows here for those types of uh, purposes. And we have another passion flower, which is growing really well in mostly shade. So hopefully that'll stick around with us. We've got all the elbow bush down inside here. Uh, this elbow bush here that I keep trimmed down is a female. Um, and there's one female elbow bush mixed into this hedge. And I think that shall cover the Mustang grape garden bed. Alright folks, y'all have a good one. This is pretty much the worst video ever made. And I just noticed this guy on the other side of that Nanking cherry, another passion flower, which I don't know if it just came up, but maybe it's been there all season, I haven't noticed. And of course, I'm, you know, I got the sunflowers mixed in. It becomes ubiquitous. It becomes just white noise at some point. Um, there's wood sorrel in here. I didn't take the time really to show it. Uh, but it's actually uh, still alive. You can see there. And Desmanthus probably mentioned that. And since I'm cutting in, I might as well point out this native variety of pecan that I uh, completely missed when I was going down the Mustang grape line. All right, now I'm really going. <laughs>